Yeah. Okay. So today is the second lecture on this chapter, work, energy, and power. So any questions from last time? No, sir. Balance sheet is there. Uh, mm. Work, energy, power. So have you looked at it? Yes, sir. Okay. So uh, you know what's a scalar and vector, right? Yeah. So now, what is the scalar field? No idea, sir. Okay. The scalar which is changing from point to point in space. Okay. For example, temperature. Temperature is a scalar, right? Yes. Don't scribble. Temperature is a scalar. So at this yeah. point, temperature is some value. At this point, some value. At this point, temperature is some value. So this is a scalar field. Okay. Similarly, vector, if at this point the vector is like this, at this point the vector is like this, at this point the vector is like this. So the length of the vector is proportional to the magnitude of the quantity and the direction is given by the arrow. Okay. So this is a vector field. Yeah. Vector is just one of them, but how the vector is changing from point to point in space is vector field. And uh, conservative force, have you heard this term conservative force? No, sir. Okay. Force is a vector, right? Yeah. Okay. So conservative force means uh, I have two points in space, say one and two, and uh, I'm traveling via this path or this path. So there will be work done when going from one to two, right? Yeah. Because there is a force. So the work done from going from one to two is, how is it related to force? F dot dx, right? Yeah. Okay. This is what we learned last time. And we have to integrate it. Hmm. From one to two. Okay, if this work done uh, from going to one to two is independent of the path, see this is path one, path two, via path one, it is equal to path two or any other paths. Okay, then it's called a conservative force. Yeah. Okay. So your force field is conservative if the work, uh, work done in moving from one point to another point is independent of the path. Okay, such a field, such a force is called conservative force. Okay. Now we introduce a concept of potential energy. Last time we did only kinetic energy. Okay. So when there is a work done on a body, its kinetic energy increases. Okay. So now we'll uh, talk about a new form of energy, which is called potential energy. Okay. So if you if there is a conservative force field, we can associate a potential energy associated with that. Uh, force okay mm. uh, so the conservative force is the work done in moving from point one to two is independent of the path that's a conservative force okay and work done against this force is stored up as potential energy so if there is a mass m and then we are doing some work on it okay Work done on M will increase its potential energy. Okay. And work done by the mass will decrease the potential energy. Okay. Whenever there is a mass, when there is external thing which is doing some work on it, its potential energy increase. And if the mass is doing some work, then its potential will decrease. Okay? Yes, sir. Right. So, for example, example of a uh, force field is gravitational force. Okay, say so this is the Earth's surface. So, how will this force field look? At any point, 
suppose mass m the amount of force will be m into g right the weight okay at this point also it will be the same thing so this is a uniform force field is that clear yeah. because g value is not changing yeah now with this force field if i if you want to move from point 1 to point 2 This is point one, and say this is point two. Okay, I can go uh, like this straight, or I can go like this, or I can go like this. Okay, so the work done to move the mass from one to two should be independent of the path. So can you check whether this is true? Suppose let's take this path P one. Okay. The work done. Let me call this uh, point E. So the work done is moving from one to E. Is how much? Work done along path one is work done from point one to point E. Plus work done is moving from point E to point two. Right. So what is the work done is moving from one to E? F dot S. Right. Yeah. Force field is constant, so I can use F dot S. I don't have to do integral F dot dS. Okay, so what is F dot S along uh, one A path? Um, sir, F is F is mg. Okay, displacement is the length uh, uh, one to A. And dot right. So what is the angle between a force and this displacement? Ninety. Uh, and what is cos ninety? Zero. Uh, so this whole thing is zero. Okay. And I plot yes along this uh, a two. Along this one is mg into length of this uh, a to two. So let this height be be h, okay? That is h, and cos of what is the angle between force and the displacement? So what is the direction of force? Sir, the which one? Downwards, right? Yeah. Okay, and displacement. Displacement is also downwards. Upward. Object. A to A to two. You are going oh, from okay. A to two, right? So it's cos one eighty. Okay, so this is equal to minus m g h. Okay. So this is the force exerted by the gravitational field. So this is work done by the gravitational field. Okay. So work done by the gravitational field minus m g h. Right. Okay. Similarly, the work done along path uh, P two. Uh, suppose this path is P two. So work done along path P two is uh, let me call this point B. So work done from one to B plus work done from B to uh, point two. What is work done from uh, along this path one B? Um, mg one B. One B H. That is H is this distance. And yeah. Then cos 180, right? So one only, right? Yeah. And what about the second part, B to two? Yeah, zero. Okay. And uh, let me call this part as P three. So along P three, uh. 
the displacement is along this direction. F into S, right? F is uniform, so I can use just F dot S. So force is mg, uh, j cap, vertically downwards, minus j cap, and displacement is uh, this length, length of 1A, uh, I cap, plus H G cap. Is this clear? Yes. The displacement is uh, length of one A in the direction of I cap, and then length of H in the direction V cap. And what is I dot J? Zero. Uh, the first term will go. So mgh and there is a minus sign here right the first minus sign so it's minus mgh so the thing is independent of that right the force is along minus j cap it's vertically downwards this minus sign is there so that minus sign will come so you see along any three uh, all the three parts the work done is same okay so even if you take an arbitrary path like this, it will turn to be same. So the gravitational field is a conservative force. Yeah. Okay, because the work done is moving from one point to another point, it's independent of the path. Okay, and also we get this result that the work done is moving uh, through a height H is MGH. Yeah. Okay, so whenever the work done is independent of the path, we can associate so if we know the end points we know the work done we don't have to figure out how it's going there so I got it if you know yes. the end point where it is reaching so i know how much work is done i don't have to figure out what is the path it's, it has taken okay so each point i can associate a number Okay, so to this point, if I associate a number zero, to this point, I have to associate a number mgh. So that the difference between these two numbers is the work done. Okay, so to this number, if I associate, say, uh, phi, then to this uh, point two, I have to associate a number phi plus mgh. So the difference between these two numbers gives me the work done. Okay. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Okay, so, uh, right. So, if I'm associating uh, your value of mgh, and this h is height from the ground, okay, and here my h is this one. So, suppose this height is h2 from the ground, and this height is h1. Okay, so the work done is moving from point 0.1 to point 0.2 is mgh2 minus mgh1 which is equal to mg into h2 minus h1, which is h. Okay. Okay, so this is an important uh, concept. When the force field is conservative, the work done is independent of the path. So to each point, I can associate a uh, energy called potential energy and the difference between the energies of the two points and giving the work done and going from the and force and potential energy are related by this relation. I said I can associate the uh, number to a point in space, right? And that number is called potential energy. And uh, that that number is a, a scalar field because it's a number. Okay, that is that potential energy B. And the potential energy 
P and the force, I can relate by this relation. Force is gradient of potential energy and the negative gradient. Okay. For example, this earth, I have defined my potential energy as mgh, right? Yeah. So at this point, it is uh, mgh1, because h1 is this height, and here it is mgh2. Okay, so the force, yeah, force at any arbitrary point at a distance or a height, say x, it's mgx. Okay, and uh, so V equal to mgx, if you take dv by dx, that will give me mg. Okay, so force equal to minus mg. Minus n indicates that it is downwards. Okay. I'm just, giving, I'm just giving an example why this relation is true. Force is gradient of potential negative gradient. So I've taken this gravitation field. Uh, okay, previously I said the gravitation field is, uh, I do like this, no? Mg, Mg, Mg everywhere. That is a gravitational force. Right, that's, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. Gravitation, gravitation force is uniform vector field, okay? But the potential energy is a scalar field, but it's not uniform. Here will have a higher value, here will have a smaller value because H is changing. Here the height is more, mgh2, here it's mgh1. And h1 is less than h2. Okay, the so uniform vector field is uh, associated with the non-uniform scalar field. Okay. Okay, and uh, from this, uh, uh, if you integrate both the sides, with respect to x, we'll get this one, integral x1 to x2, or x initial to x final of f to x equal to minus dv, and this is the work done. This is the work done, going from initial push to final question, which is equal to the change in potential energy. Okay. Okay, so to find out the work done, instead of doing the integration of the force field, you can just do the subtraction of the vector uh, potential energy. Okay, the force field is known as mg. I know this force field value as mg in the gravitational case. Okay, and this uh, is mgh. So instead of doing this integration, I can use this mgh of the two points and then subtract it and I'll get the work done. Okay, conservation of mechanical energy. Uh, so here there is a conservative force, F, force field, and there is a mass M. So because of this force, the velocity will change. Because once the force is there, acceleration is there. Because force could aim into A. So whenever force is there, there will be acceleration. And when acceleration is there, the velocity will change. And when the velocity is changing, the kinetic energy will change. Okay. So uh, the change in kinetic energy is the work done on the mass. And the work done on the mass, in a small displacement delta x is f into delta x. So that will give us a small change in the increase kinetic energy. So delta k is force into delta x. Right? Yeah. And this uh, work done is also written in terms of potential, right? Gradient of the potential from this one. Mm. Okay. So from this I can write delta v as f into delta x. For a finite interval. Okay, so now instead of uh, f into delta s, I'll write delta v. So from this, I'll get delta k plus delta v equal to zero. Okay, so the mechanical energy of the system is kinetic energy plus potential energy. The total of that is constant, it's not changing. Right? Yes, sir. Okay, so basically it is saying if we have
if i have a mass m be moving with some velocity v in a force field okay this is equivalent to the mass m moving with velocity v with potential energy v okay so i replace this force field with the potential energy v got it no because in gravitational uh, this thing uh, the kinetic energy the velocity can calculate by using that the, this force is there or you can say that it's in it's in presence of a potential energy okay i don't have to add once i use potential energy i don't have to add a force field here because the effect of the force field is captured in this potential energy getting the idea right yes sir okay now we are considering the spring okay spring in its relaxed position natural length there won't be any force in it okay so when the spring is in relaxed condition let me assume that uh, the mass attached to the spring is at a location x equal to 0 so this is my location x equal to 0 okay so now i'm stretching the spring now we have force will develop and the value of the force is k to x where x is this length the change in the natural length okay okay and if i compress it and decrease the length by x now the force direction will be this way here the force is this way okay here the force direction will change okay so when the thing is moving from here to here we are doing some work against the force right so that will get stored as a potential energy in the spring hmm. spring a natural length no force is there by extending by length l we are the spring force is coming to play so we have to uh, do some work against the spring force to bring it to this position so this work done is integral f dx this is a variable force the force is variable because the force is a function of x k into x where x is so here the force value will be something here the force value will be more because here the extension is more and the value of that uh, force is k into x so integral of x is x square right x square by 2 okay so if i'm going from 0 to xm then the work done will be half k xm square okay so this work done will get stored as potential energy in spring so the expression of potential energy in spring is half k x square okay okay sir So this is how the force is uh, changing when you uh, extend the length of the spring. This x is the extension. So when the extension is positive, the force is negative. Right? Okay. Because the force is uh, towards uh, negative x. This is positive x, and the force is in this direction. This way. When it is extended, when x is positive. Here x is negative, and the spring force is in the positive direction. Mm. So that's why when x is negative, the force is positive, and that is captured with this negative sign here. Force is minus k into x. Okay, and uh, this potential energy we have derived as half k x square, right? Yeah. So that is the plot of this. This one, this potential energy V. So K is it's a it's a parabola. Right. This is potential energy V. Okay. And the total energy is conserved because there is uh, no loss of energy. So this thing is valid. Kinetic energy change in kinetic energy plus potential energy should be zero. Okay. So since the uh, Kinetic energy, potential energy here is maximum. The kinetic energy will be minimum. So the total energy is this value. This total energy. Okay. So the kinetic energy will vary like this. This is a variation of kinetic energy. So the sum is constant. 
when potential energy is more the kinetic energy should be less and when potential energy is zero the kinetic energy will be maximum because so the sum of these two is constant so the kinetic energy will vary as an inverted parabola so the, the sum of these two parabolas is horizontal line got it okay sir okay so that you can see here also the velocity of this suppose this is oscillating at this uh, turning point the velocity will be zero okay and it moves in this direction the velocity at this uh, mean position will be maximum and here at this turning point again the velocity will be zero so it will be uh, kinetic energy is zero so kinetic energy is zero at the extreme positions and maximum at the middle position mean position and that's what is the blue variation is sure the kinetic energy is zero at the extreme position and maximum at the middle position mean position and potential energy is opposite because it's half kx square potential is maximum at the extreme positions and minimum at zero at the mean position okay yes sir okay uh just try this example uh simulating car accident Steady collisions by moving cars on moving spin of different spin constant. Typical simulation: car of mass 1000 kg, speed 18 kilometers per hour, smooth road, colliding horizontally with spring. Spring constant is uh, spring constant is k this much. So, what is the maximum compression of the spring? Answer. So we have to find x, right? Yeah. So initially the car has got kinetic energy. The the car is moving at some speed, right? So it has kinetic energy. So when it collides and stops, the kinetic energy has reduced to how much? Zero. Ah. Uh. Yeah, once it collides and stops, the kinetic energy is zero. So initially it has got some this thing. Finally the velocity is zero, and here uh, the spring has compressed by some value. Here the compression is zero, the natural length before it collides. Okay, so here there is some value, say x m. So you have to find x m. Right? Mm. So you have to equate the energies. So the initial kinetic energy is half m. U square and potential energy of the spring is zero, right? Because yeah. it's yeah. natural length, and then half m v square that is zero plus half k x m square, right? From that you get m by k into u equal to x m square root of m by k. M is thousand. And uh, spring constant is oh, it's a big number, six point two five into. Okay, it's cancelling into u. U is eighteen kilometers per hour. So into thousand divided by. You are doing SI units. Okay. So it's this is square root of six twenty five square root is twenty uh, uh, five square is six twenty five right? So this is two point five right? Two point five square is six point two five. So it's one by two point five into uh, five. So it is two meters. Is that enough? No. Yeah. Yeah, two meters. Hmm. So basically, there are only two energies. One is kinetic energy, which is getting lost and stored as spring potential energy, and total energy is conserved because there is no friction and other things. 
right? Uh, they are given a school through, right? So there is yeah. no, other, no other form of energy or loss of energy. Mm. Okay. Uh, now he is uh, giving some friction. Uh, NCRT is a good book. So, uh, first, uh, if you are lacking motivation, you can read NCRT because NCRT will, uh, if it is too simple, you can uh, solve it quickly. Otherwise, you have to do NCRT examples at least once. Okay, now he's, he's, now he's putting friction of 0.5. Now we have to find the compression. Sir, uh, example two. Previous example, the same one. So now the initial energy is half m u square, right? The final energy yeah. is half a. Uh, this xm will be different. Okay. This xm is different from the previous one. So anything else we have to add? Are these two things equal? Um, this work done against friction. Yeah. Here it, here it will come. Yeah. Because the initial energy is uh, some, some part of it is going to do the work against friction. Right? Mm. So how do you find work against, against friction? Sorry, sir. How do you find this thing? This is known, right? U is known, so this is known. Yeah. Okay. So if you find this friction, then we can find XM. K is known. So we just have to find this friction force. Work done against friction. Yeah. That is how much? Mg, uh, Mg into 0 0.5. So M is? Friction force is mu to N into the displacement S, right? Yeah. So you have to find how much it is uh, traveling. Ah. So we have to use equation of Newton. See, this S should be, uh, let us assume it's equal to XM. Okay. It's like the, the car is here and the spring is here, right? So when it touches yeah. the spring, well, let us assume that condition is this one. Okay. The velocity is U. And the friction starts only here, from, from this point. This is mm -hmm. point number one, and when it is fully compressed, it's point number two, the final. Okay, so at point number of the energy is half m u square, because the friction starts only from here. Okay, so distance, the friction force has to do work is xm only. Okay, and normal reaction is m into g. And mu is given. So this is a quadratic equation in XM. Okay. So there will be two, two answers. So that's what he has done. Half m b square half m uh, k x square plus for the displacement of the friction force he has taken XM only. Okay. So this is a quadratic in XM. You can use that formula, b square minus 4 ac. Okay, so now he has got the compression as 1.35. Previously it was 2 meters, right? Mm. Now it has reduced to 1.35 meters. Okay. Okay. I think the numbers will cancel nicely. So, so to, uh, Friday there will be one more class on this theory. Whether the theory will be over, after that, uh, next week will be fully problems. Okay, sir. This is the first week for this chapter. Mm. Okay, uh, this one you do. Okay, read this one. Uh, mass M suspended from the spring of uh, spring constant K is held to keep the spring in relaxed length. Uh, Okay, spring means relaxation means it's, the spring is not feeling this mass. Okay, 
because the hand is supporting it the applied force is decreased gradually so the, the force which is you are holding this mass is you are decreasing gradually so that the block moves downwards with negligible speed that's important how far from the initial position the block will stop god no there is a spring of natural length i'm attaching a mass to it and we're holding it by hand with full force so that the spring does not feel the mass okay the spring will be natural length now i'm slowly trying to release my hand slowly so that the once i do that the, the spring will start extending is it clear yeah yeah the spring will the, the force which is extending the spring is mg minus the force i'm applying by hand initially mm -hmm. the force i'm applying by hand is mg in the opposite direction so mg minus mg will be zero and i'm reducing the force applied by the hand will be mg minus force of hand which is less so the gradual force will get added so what so how far will it go mm, we have to find x only yeah but from which equation spring will get extended right yeah from the original length the spring will get extended and it and it stay in this position right so the force acting on this block is mg downwards is there any other force the force of the hand no, no the hand is removed right yeah in the end hand is removed okay only this force only this force the spring force kx yeah so these two are equal in the final position so uh so x is mg by k right well, he has not given the numbers okay this is the expression uh this is uh, this is for a part the b part is uh the applied force is removed suddenly so how far from the initial position will the block come to rest okay in the second situation again the spring will get extended in the final thing okay so the weight or the force acting is mg what is the upward force kx uh, but some other x right yeah it could be okay any other th any other force is there no sir so what will be the value of x now in the second case sir in this one we will have to differentiate something uh see in the second case there will be an acceleration here that is the difference in the first case there is no acceleration it's static equilibrium that is ensured by releasing the mass gradually that's why he saying it has to be released gradually when it is released gradually it's as if it's rested each and every small small steps so the acceleration is zero hmm. in the second case there is acceleration okay yeah okay to find this value of x we can use energy conservation in the relaxed position uh let that be at height h h1 and let this be at height h2 and the earth is somewhere downwards here is the earth okay so the initial energy is mg h1 the final energy is mg h2 in either form of energy the final final position spring energy right Ah, uh, x square where it is the x is the extension and x is h2 minus h1. H1 minus h2. H1 minus h2 is x is the is the extension. Yeah. So, so from this I can get x as. mg into h1 minus h2 divided by 2m. So previously, 
x was mg by k right here is mg by k into this factor 2 times delta h the previously the extension was mg by k right yeah now it is mg by k into this factor 2 into delta h delta h is uh, uh, h1 minus h2 hmm. hold on it's actually x square This is x square, no? And this h1 minus h2 is also x because that is extension. So this delta h will cancel. So now it is. Uh, So this is equal to x. So it is twice of the previous one because of this factor 2. Got it? Yes. Uh, here I use the static equilibrium condition to get uh, extension. But in the second case, I am using the energy equation because that's the easier way to handle it. These two are separate. Okay, in the second case, I'm using the energy equation. Huh. In the first case, mg by mg by k, right? Extension. In the second case, it's 2 mg by k. Okay. Yeah. That's what we got. Yeah, here you just have to use the static equilibrium condition. In the second case, uh, you have to use the energy conservation. This one. Clear? Okay, here in this case, this is a this is a vertical spin, right? So here is the horizontal motion. So there is no gravity for energy here. But here, the initial energy is the kinetic energy of this block. It's moving with some velocity. And after that, when it hits it and compress it, there will be spring energy, right? Yeah. And in addition to that, there is, there is friction on this path A to C. Okay. So there will be work done in moving from A to C and to the, on this final position. Okay, say C1. Okay. So the initial energy is half m v square or whatever is the velocity, which is equal to the final potential energy half m kx square plus the work done in moving from a to this final position. Okay. So you can try this example and then you can check. Don't look at the solution immediately. Just try this one and then if you're not getting, look at the solution. Okay. So are you getting time to look at the sheets? Yes. Okay. All right, and another thing is the playlist. Uh, are you getting time for the playlist? Yes. <laughs> okay. The, this is for work energy power. I put it in the file. You can just click it. It will take you there. Work energy and power. Uh, so have, I don't think you have looked at this playlist, right? Those of motion you have looked at it. But uh, circular motion you have not, right? Circular motion. Okay, whenever you find time, look at it. Uh, or you can uh, skip some portions. Uh, now, whenever you click a video, you know 
certain parts will be simple and or you already know so you can just skip them you can click the bottom bar you know that right so this bottom bar you can click to skip portions yeah okay so somehow you have to manage time because things if they are obvious you just have to click just skip by clicking this bottom bar yeah okay so right now the coaching is not taking much time right because the physics is uh, not what about maths the uh, the sheets are they you have finished the sheets in the uh, coaching class maths so in maths we have to solve problems from one book singage okay so right. i have to do that but there will be a lot of problems right yeah how do you select them then which one to solve Okay. Uh, he tells us. He tells us which one to do. So have you selected problems or you are selecting on your own? Sorry, sir. Have you selected problems and uh, say that you have to do this one or you are selecting on your own? You are selecting no, on your own. He only selects uh, and tells us. Teacher only selects and tells us. Okay. Right. Otherwise, you will not find time to do everything. Yeah. Right. So tomorrow will be the last part of the theory. This thing. So tomorrow I'll do yes. this uh, equilibrium conditions, and then power, and then collisions. Collisions is an important concept. Okay, sir. And uh, this circular motion. This so uh, this is a mass attached string. So if you give a velocity at the bottommost point, it will. Either it will oscillate or it will complete the circle, right? Depending on how much velocity I come at the bottom point. Okay, so this problem you can solve by energy, energy conservation. Because at the bottommost point, if we take this as reference, the potential will be zero, and there will be some kinetic energy. And at this point P, there will be some potential energy because of the height difference, and there will be some kinetic energy. Okay, so you can solve this vertical uh, circular motion problem using the energy energy equation also. This is the energy equation. The yes, yes. Uh, decrease in kinetic energy has gone into increasing the potential energy. Okay, and uh, see there are two things, right? One is the velocity of the mass is decreasing from the bottommost point, right? And the tension is also decreasing, right? Tension will be maximum yes. at the bottom, bottommost point. Even the velocity will be maximum at the bottommost point. So when you are trying to push it up. Both tension and the velocity are decreasing. Okay, so, sir. So if velocity becomes zero before the tension becomes zero, then the mass will oscillate. Okay, sir. Okay, that's what happens in a simple pendulum. The velocity hmm. at the extreme point is becoming zero, but the tension is still there. But, yes, sir. Okay, but if the tension becomes zero before the velocity becomes zero, then the uh, string will slack. Hmm. That will happen in this upper part, okay, and then the mass will move as a projectile with that initial velocity. Okay. okay. So there are two conditions for the uh, mass to move in a vertical circle: the tension should not become zero, and the velocity should not become zero. Okay. okay. So what should be the velocity at point A such that the uh, both these conditions are satisfied, or one of them is satisfied? Okay, it will turn out the velocity should be uh, greater than phi g r. R is the radius of that circular path. So if the velocity is greater than phi g r, then the thing will complete the circle. Okay, okay. so means that the tension and the velocity hmm. will not become zero at any point. Hmm. And if it is uh, less than phi g r, but it is greater than two g r, then the thing will oscillate or something like it will leave the circle. In the upper part, and when it is less than 2 gr, it will oscillate in the lower half. So there are three parts of this velocity. One, it is greater than 5 gr. There is no problem; it will complete the circle. Okay. And the second part is less than 5 gr, but greater than 2 gr. In that case, the tension is becoming zero, but the velocity is not zero. Okay. So at this point, we we'll start moving as a the string will slack and we'll start moving as a projectile motion. And the third part is velocity is low, less than 2 gr, 
So in this case, the velocity is becoming zero before the tension becomes zero. So it will start oscillating again like a simple pendulum. Mm. So just to go through this thing. Okay, sir. Bye. Right. Okay. We'll meet tomorrow. Okay, sir. Bye, sir. Yeah, bye.